Well, in my opening statement, pulling together. Now, in the past year, COVID defined every one of our lives. It forced us to live in a way we never wanted to live. With so much development and progress made in the world, we were surprised that such an event like COVID-19 could occur because we always thought that the progress we made thus far would have been far superior to any threat we would have to experience. But we were wrong. So here we are, more than 100 years after the last global pandemic, facing another one. I recently saw in a magazine a cartoon of a man struggling to carry a record player, a fax machine and a computer and a phone. The following caption showed the same guy with a tiny smartphone. The previous chaos was replaced with calm and efficiency. Now we live in a world where that quiet evolution has always been a priority. So although nobody likes change and the last two years have seen a lot of it, all the changes, past and present, are intended to support that same positive evolution. Our children and their children will inherit a better world, a better environment and a better standard of living. Responding to COVID-19 has not been perfect. However, boy, we really need to pay our respects to our health workers, our frontline staff, the military and even the government for the amount of hard work they've done to keep each of us safe. We will put this pandemic behind us, just like other big hills we have climbed as a nation. However, the post-COVID world will look different due to lessons we have learned thus far. And despite all your political differences, this government has done its very best to minimize the impact around the country from this pandemic. We should take this opportunity to recognize that effort because without it, life today would be very different and history will judge us harshly. So as we go on with our lives, we are very easily distracted by the shiny stuff, the razzle, the dazzle that comes from time to time. And when it arrives, we very idiotically forget the things that have been by our side for quite some time. In fact, throughout our lives, we go chasing the temporary pleasures in life and forget those who have always been there with us. We fail to understand the subtlety in life and ignore them and lose everything. Our inability to understand and foresee has always been detrimental to our nation's growth. If you look at our growth since independence, we always blame saying as a nation, we haven't grown, we haven't done this, we haven't done that. And always, always swift to blame the leaders of this country not comprehending that it was us in the first place who elected and selected those very leaders that we scream at. In this new year, let's learn to understand the subtle blessings we've been given as a nation and not chase after the very short, very immediate pleasures in life and then lament about losing a better future for all of us. I always tell a friend of mine every day, you got to learn to read the room. Right now, there's a lot of urgency and noise asking our leaders to run to the IMF to get a loan. So our immediate economic issues are sorted. But we need to understand the very reason we are. As a beggar state, is these loans we've been taking instead of finding a real solution to get out of the debt. Remember how much noise the liberal jokers were making during the election saying this debt, that debt, this country is a dead country, all that nonsense. When someone steps in to solve that problem and persevere, hoping to find a new way to get away from our problems, those jokers are again calling us to run to the IMF to get another loan. It's the same thing with the organic fertilizer matter. During the election, those very jokers were screaming, saying, our health care is this, people's lives are at risk. And when a leader takes a tangible step, to solve that problem, we do everything to make him look like a joke. Well, in this new year, let's not forget the people who are doing their very best to make us shine, support us, make our lives better, and then forget them and run towards a temporary thing that lasts for a few moments. Because when you do that, you only hurt the ones who have been there for you in thick and thin. Once you return after your temporary excursions, 
they will not be there for you anymore. And in the end, it's you who lose. In 2022, we will definitely face hardships, economically, politically, and for most of you personally as well. But just like that, we too will face victories as well. We should understand that for us as Sri Lankans, it's only us that's there. And that we got to do our part to be victorious as a nation and learn to pull together rather than pull apart. All right, my guest tonight, the Director General of the Government Information Department, veteran journalist uh, Mohan Samaraika and renowned economist Dr. Ken Silva will join me shortly. But before that, Dani Duvitanamasam joins me right here in the studio uh, to take a look at um, the New Year's version of um, the real story. A happy New Year to you, Dani Good to see you. Um, here we are in 2022. Uh, Obviously, we need to accept the fact that there's going to be a lot of challenges we got to face. But the, 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 the silver line here is that we can face it as a, a united nation. Um, what exactly are you focusing on the real story? Well, uh, Happy New Year to you, to you too as well, uh, Mahesh. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned that it is our united response that will be the, the decisive factor when it comes to how we proceed to 2022. And that is literally where we are going to focus and th to look at the prospectus, to look at the outlook of what 2022 would look like. Now, as crucial as 2021 has been, the year 2022 will also be decisive in the developmental outlook of Sri Lanka. Critical regions of concern have been led by the economy and the general future of the country. Therefore, it is essential to have a breakdown of what to expect regarding where we are heading as a nation. Firstly, on the economy. One of the primary objectives of the budget of 2022 was to bring about a consistent economic framework that allows large-scale to small-scale enterprises to structure long-term plans. Alongside this, the budget aims at bringing the deficit to 8.8% towards the end of 2022. A highlight of this effort was the one-time surcharge tax at a rate of 25%, charged from individuals or companies with a taxable income exceeding 2 billion rupees for the year of assessment from 2020 to 2021. This is intended to bring in 100 billion rupees to the government. In order to have a stronghold on the foreign reserve situation within the country, Sri Lanka has limited many imports, which includes vehicles. The halt in the importation of vehicles is to continue in 2022 as well. This has been coupled with the country reaching 3.1 billion US dollars in reserves towards the end of 2021. Sri Lanka will have to pay off 500 million US dollars in debt by January 2022 and another billion dollars by June. The finance minister alongside the government has demonstrated their capability to make these payments without defaulting on our debt obligations. Sri Lanka's export in 2021 for the rubber product sector alone has achieved 1 billion US dollars income and Sri Lanka Export Development Board intends to increase it to 3 billion by 2025. For the period of January to November 2021, merchandise exports increased by 22.39% to 11,116 million US dollars compared to the corresponding period of 2020 following increased exports of almost all the major product sectors, which includes apparel and textiles, tea and rubber-based products. This is a strong position to hold as our country moves into 2022, as the new energy within the export sector seems to have taken effect. Sizable growth in export performance for specific countries has also been enhanced, with the United States seeing over double the exports witnessed last year during similar time periods. Two key areas that have seen massive transformative changes have been the fisheries and dairy industry. The fishery sector exports have reached a historical high of over 287 million US dollars. The administration has also expressed a vision of making our country self-sufficient in milk. In assessing the pharmaceutical industry today, nearly 25% of all medicines in the state health sector are supplied locally, saving millions of dollars in foreign exchange. This has been enhanced by the investment zones created in Hambantota and the guaranteed buyback agreement implemented by the 2014 government of Sri Lanka. In lieu of these industrial developments, the measures taken by the central bank with a view to improve foreign exchange liquidity in the domestic market, such as introduction of incentive schemes for workers' remittances and the rules covering the repatriation and conversion of export proceeds are also augmenting official reserves. In reference to the political situation, the opposition has been able to capitalize on certain disagreements within the government. However, given the economically turbulent time period we are currently within, it is a quite important feat to recognize the fact that the country is seeing a strong governing party with a powerful majority. This has been capitalized by the fact that after a long period of time, Sri Lanka has recognized a consistent foreign policy that is reflective of where the country aims to go towards in terms of its multilateral relationships. The Chinese foreign minister is expected to visit Sri Lanka on the 8th of January 2022 
This will be symbolic of the priorities of the country as it moves towards an age of investments. And I personally think most certainly 2022 we might head to a food shortage. It's clear that the government doesn't have a path to drive this country in terms of economically, socially and politically. So the government has forgotten the fact that the country has fallen and the government is trying to ignore the fact that we are in verge of bankruptcy. So what government should do, get, get together with all political parties, all opposition parties and have them discuss with the government how to drive the country forward in 2022. If you examine the situation in the country right now, and if we examine the situation over the past couple of months, perhaps uh, past 18 months, I think uh, we are in for a very difficult situation, extremely difficult situation in 2022. As, as we all know that we are facing a shortage of foreign exchange, uh, which is uh, to be expected because our main foreign income is from uh, tourism which is, amounts to about 4.5 billion and then about 6.5, 6.6 billion on foreign employment, a 1.2 by plantation and, and uh, government industry and so on. So altogether we have about generally we envisage about, about 15 to 16 billion US dollars which mm, which we feel are not absolutely comfortable but manageable. Uh, now, that has been lost almost 80% of it in the last year and a half or two years nearly. So, then we are definitely struggling. Now, we are very optimistic and looking forward to work out effectively and efficiently to overcome this uh, issue for 2020. Sri Lanka has demonstrated immense prowess in the fight against COVID-19. This was enhanced by the current administration's commitment to vaccinate its entire population. Towards the end of 2021, Sri Lanka had given out the booster dose to close to 4 million people. Close to 65% of the population is fully vaccinated against COVID-19. It was this form of success that led to Sri Lanka leaving the country open for Christmas season as well. It is fair to assume that within the first few months of 2022, the country can reach a fully vaccinated status. This is further encouraged by the fact that 100% of the population above the age of 60 has been vaccinated against the coronavirus. The successful inoculation campaign provides a good protection against novel waves of the coronavirus. We as a government and the health sector is making all necessary arrangements to meet any eventuality that is put down the pipeline. So uh, that's where we stand at the moment. But uh, we are very cautious, but we cautiously uh, moving forward and uh, knowing that there is, there could be any kind of ex escalation of this pandemic. We have now gone into the third vaccination also and we will continue with the third vaccination. So the, the major issue we faced during the last one and a half years, we have managed to resolve. Divided opinions are present about how 2022 will manifest for the country. But if the people realize it's time to focus and build this nation to its true prowess, 2022 will be promising. Maisha, I believe that message of hope is something that you'll want to focus on in today's program. Yeah, exactly. Um, hope is something. Uh, I don't know whether you remember. Um, I hope think is not one, of the, <laughs> one of the one of the uh, guests we had uh, in the great um, Sri Lankan research series uh, said, you know, hope is not exactly a solution. Uh, hope it's not a business plan. <laughs> exactly. So for us as a nation, we got to start working and doing things. Um, Dani Dutharmasam, um, thank you very much uh, for that as well. That was Danny Dutano with some of the real story there. Thank you very much. Let's take a short commercial break. On the other side, the Director General of the Government Information Department, Janice Mohan Sandanayaka, and economist Dr. Kenneth Dizilwa will join me to break down 2022 for all of us. This is Get Real. Back in a moment.